Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2024 BMW M8 Competition Convertible. Huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this performance oriented sports car for me today. Definitely take a look at their website. That link is down in the description. This M8 is finished off in a very beautiful Malachi green metallic. MSRP is just over $165,000. Now this is powered by the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 paired to that 8-speed automatic transmission pumping out 617 horsepower, 553 pound-feet of torque. That power sent through the X-Drive all-wheel drive system propelling this 4,500 pound convertible from 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. It has a top speed of 190 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 20.1 gallons. You'll expect to see around 15 miles per gallon in the city, 22 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 111.1 inches. Its overall length is 191.2. It has a width of 74.9 and a height of 53 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this M8, let's start off with the kidney grille. So on this model, it's finished off in gloss black. It has a very nice thin design to it. Very wide though as well, and there are plenty of cutouts to provide a lot of cooling to that engine. Forward facing camera with the M8 badge that's blacked out on that driver's side. This also has a set of LED headlights. They have the laser light technology. You'll notice the blue accents will indicate that. There's also LED turn signals and DRLs. And in the lower section, there's a lot more mesh. There's also parking sensors right in the middle, forward sensor for the adaptive cruise, and then there's even a lower spoiler up front as well but there's plenty of cutouts in that honeycomb mesh to provide additional cooling as well and then there's very nice lines that come down the hood now this also has a beautiful set of 20 inch wheels with that multi-spoke design and two-tone finish there's the m sport brakes just behind that m8 badge just behind that tire this has a set of gloss black power folding side mirrors with the turn signal and the camera system and then as you can tell i currently have the top down so this is how you want to drive this around. If you're buying the convertible, you want that top down experience. And with the soft top up at the moment now, just to show you this angle with what it looks like with the top up, I think it has a really nice design either way, but I wanted to put the top back up because if you actually hold on the unlock button, you can actually fold the top down. So the windows will automatically roll down and then I am continuing to hold on that unlock button. You can see, we have that divider there for the soft top to sit on top of. And just like that, the top is now down. So we have this angle again. Now, if you actually hold on the lock button now, you can actually reverse that process. So I have actually never seen a convertible where you can put it back up using the key fob. Usually it is just unlock. And in a matter of seconds, now we have the top operation back up. So very cool and quick to be able to see that. If I continue to hold it, it will roll the windows back up. So they are down and there we go, back up. But you can also have all four windows down with the top up, which is really cool to see. And then in back, we have that very small trunk mounted spoiler with the third brake light. There's also the backup camera, LED tail lights, and then all these sensors down below along with all the gloss black and the quad tip dual exhaust. Now, if we triple tap the lock button, we can actually start this up. And if you triple tap on it one more time, you can shut it off. So you have a lot of controls just on that key fob alone. You can also use it to open up the power trunk or that button up underneath. Now with the top up, you can actually fold that partition up out of the way to give yourself a lot more interior space. Now it does have a lockout. So if you try to put the top down without this folded down, it will not let you because it wants to make sure that you don't have any items located underneath. So you have a lot of space with the top up. When you have the top down, it's limited to about this height here. And then you can also fold down the back seats. They are individual. So on the driver's side, we have that control. Passenger side, we have that control with a little bit of extra space. And with the back seats down, that gives you a lot more interior space, especially when the top is up and you have that partition out of the way. It gives you a lot more usable space, which is nice to see. So you can still place some items in the back, which is nice. For a convertible, it seems to be very practical and you have that back seat space as well. Now, as we enter the front seats, 
This door panel has a very nice design to it. We have all the brushed aluminum accents, memory seating controls, there's Bowers & Wilkins audio, a little bit of storage with a trunk release, and then you can actually put all four windows down with the push of one button. You can do them individually, and then there's the uh, side mirror controls as well. M8 Competition is an illuminating badge down below and then take a look at these beautiful leather seats with the two-tone design. These actually have heated headrests as well. There's the M8 badge. They are automatic with the exception of this manual adjustment right here. And then let's take a quick look at the back seats. So you can flip that backrest forwards and the entire seat will move forwards, giving me access at five foot 10 to hop into the back. Now you're not really buying this to be a full four seater. As you can tell, you really have to move the seats forward in order to get some leg space. And at five foot 10, I am ducking slightly. If I really needed to be back here, I could ride around town. But again, you're, you're, its sole purpose is not to have backseat passengers, but you could make it work if you really needed to. And then it's just as easy to hop out, put that seat back, and now we can hop into the front. Now, as we work our way to the steering wheel now, we have the M Sport steering wheel with all the stitching, all the brushed aluminum accents, M1 and M2. There's the paddle shifters as well. On this left side, all the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings. Right side, you get volume and tuning along with Bluetooth and voice commands. But let's fire this back up and take a listen to the M8 comp. <laughs> And looking at the digital cockpit, on the left side, there's fuel along with miles per hour. Right side, you get the tack along with engine temperature. And then right in the middle, you can scroll through some more info using that button on the top of the turn signal. So right now there's the odometer along with some additional information. You can also pull up the PSI and temperature for your tires. There's a few other vitals to look at, even live readouts for your horsepower and torque. You can also pull up a G-force meter, look at your music, and then what the driving modes are currently set up for. So this is how it's currently set up. And then there's also what gear the vehicle is in, along with your MPG readout. Now we also have M1 and M2. So I have those currently set up, or if I hold on M2, we get to go into the M dynamic mode, and it sounds a little bit louder when you rev it. Now on this left side, there's all the headlight adjustments. This also has the head-up display, so it's currently showing miles per hour and the speed limit sign. And then for the infotainment system, this is what I'll call the older screen setup from BMW as they have the larger curved screen now. So on the home screen, you have navigation, media and phone, you have setup, some other data information that you can quickly scroll through. And then we have all the presets on this left side that you can quickly get into. Now, if we go into car, we can use the rotary dial down below to further go through this where you have sport displays that you can get into so if you're doing some sporty driving you can monitor all of that m menu will give you m1 and m2 so you can go in and configure these as you would like to just so that way you have a shortcut to how you want the settings to be there's also various settings that you can go into as well and then we have driver profiles you can even get into apple carplay and android auto now you can also use the controls down below to get into all of these shortcuts. So you don't have to use it as a touchscreen system. So it's very easy to go through. Underneath that, there's two air vents. There's also a shortcut to the intelligent safety. So that way you can pull all these up and have them configured as needed. And then we also have the controls for the climates laid out right in the middle. This also has heated and ventilated seats. So you can use that one control to go through both of those. We have some other defrosters and some other controls along with the temperature dials. There's power and volume for the radio, all of the presets and tuning. Down below, there's a wireless charging pad along with some auxiliaries and cup holders. And that lid is covered in carbon fiber along with the rest of the accents right in the middle here. Now to put this into reverse, we will push it to the left and up where we have that backup camera along with all of those guidelines. You can even pull up the 360 view so that way you have no shortage of visibility around the entire vehicle. And then we can put it into drive. If you pop it over one more time, that is for the manual setting. So you can use the paddles or you can actually shift using the shifter itself. On the back side, there's park. 
as well as the transmission. You can actually adjust how slow or quickly you would like that to shift and respond. Now there's traction control, shortcut to the camera system. You can also use that to pull up the forward facing camera. There's parking sensors as well as the engine start stop. And then this also has a few different modes. If I push on M mode, we have road, sport, and track. That will actually change the gauge cluster setup as well. And it will pull up the tack in a much larger view on that head up display. Track mode will simply just turn off that infotainment system. So you will have the same display for that gauge cluster setup. There's setup along with the exhaust note, auto hold, there's the e-brake. This even has heated headrests, which is why you see all the perforations in that design. So when you have the top down, you can still say nice and toasty. Now this control right here is for the convertible top. So just by pulling on that, that is how you can get that operation to work. And then right in the middle, we have the split design for the armrest. And then the glove box also has plenty of space for additional items. And then with the top up, as you can tell, there's a little bit of a pillar there, but you have large windows on both sides. So it's really not all that hard to see. Over this left shoulder, you don't even really have that much of a pillar either. So top up or down, it's pretty easy to see around this convertible. As we set off now behind the wheel for the BMW M8, this is always a very cool convertible to check out because this is a daily driving convertible that's also practical. You have the back storage area or if you need that third or fourth person with the trunk space too. So even being a convertible, it's pretty spacious for what it is, but you can also put everything into the performance oriented settings and have some fun. So not only do you have a convertible if you're looking for that top down experience, but you have something that is going to handle back roads incredibly well. Being the competition, we also have a little bump in horsepower compared to a non-competition. And it's really cool how you have several different ways that you can drive this vehicle. So I just had it in the quickest shifting transmission setting. If I bump it down to setting one and we do this again, hopefully, you can hear that delay in shifting. So you basically have multiple different settings for this vehicle. And if you just put it in the normal drive settings, it will aggressively shift much quicker. So you can even do that and let it shift itself. It's, it's very cool. It's just depending on how you wanna drive. If you're in stop and go traffic, put it in setting one. If you're doing some performance driving, setting three, get those quick and uh, responsive shifts from this transmission. So it is a blast to drive. It also handles incredibly well for being a convertible. Having that extra weight, it takes turns well. And it's, it, it almost seems like I'm in a coupe. It doesn't seem like I'm in a convertible that weighs more. This is going to put a smile on your face no matter where you drive. It's very comfortable, it's very quiet. Aside from the exhaust, which you can shut off, I've just had it on because I like it on. I like that, that louder exhaust. But if you tone it down, it's not quite as loud. So again, just depending on how you wanna drive. And in sport mode, second gear, here we go. Just like that, we're up to speed. I have it in the quickest shifts at the moment. So they are incredibly responsive, very quick. As soon as you touch that paddle, you are in the next gear. But this is what it's like to be behind the wheel of the M8 competition. It's definitely fun. I've been in a few of these. I really don't have anything negative to say about it. I really do enjoy driving BMWs. They are very performance oriented. I think BMW has done it very well for their performance oriented M cars. This is a track weapon that you really wouldn't even think about if you pulled up to it unless you really knew what it was. Uh, this is something kind of under the radar-ish, especially being the convertible. Uh, you have a very performance-oriented convertible that is super fun to drive.
Now, if we come to a slower speed, I'm going to guess right around 30 miles an hour or so, we can actually put the top down. And with that down, we can start on the top operation. I will be putting all four windows back up just for the audio purposes, but it's a very quick process to do, and it's nice that you can do it while moving, and then with one button, we can put all four windows back up. So let's give it a mild acceleration with the top down. Hopefully you'll be able to hear that exhaust. Here we go. And it sounds good. Definitely sounds good with that top down. It's a little chilly today, so I'm not going to keep the top down for long but we'll do one more acceleration. It's what you would expect with the top down. And then if you have all four windows down, of course it's going to give you a lot more of a crossed breeze and wind. Uh, but if you're looking for a convertible, you are going to be expecting that, of course. And we can put the top back up with the push of a button very quick to do that. And once it's locked into place, here we go. And that is going to wrap it up for the 2024 BMW M8 competition. Once again, a huge shout out to Hendrick BMW Northlake for providing this for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up. Consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.